Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I'm uh, currently working on a project that I'm filming. It's a separate project, but I've gotten to a point where I need my planer and I don't have dust collection set up for the planer yet. So I figured it's time to finish what I started with my dust collector. Um, so up here, you can see um, I have this open port here in the ceiling still. And that's going to be, if you remember from my dust collection videos, that is reserved for my mobile equipment. So that would be my planer, my, my um, spindle sander, my drum sander, and possibly my bandsaw. So I've come up with a system. So this idea isn't an original idea. But instead of dealing with the files that were already created, I kind of wanted to make my own files that I knew would work for my system. And I incorporated a, one or two improvements in my system. And that system I'm talking about is, I, you know, I think it's a commercial system called Maglock. But um, there's some free files on Thingiverse as well that use the same type of system. And ultimately, it's, basic, uh, it's just a flange. Um, system that um, you can have adapters attached to and then they use the magnets actually make it attach um, you know to each other here and it's a pretty strong connection these are neodymium magnets and like I can't get it apart with one hand one of the improvements that I made on this system is I added these holes in these fingers they'll interface with each other so when the pieces are locked together, it won't. It has no tendency to twist um, on itself, and the twisting is what will make it disconnect. Since this will be hanging from the ceiling, I wanted to make sure I couldn't accidentally shear, you know, use any shear forces to have it come out like this, right? So that's what those little interface pieces kind of help you avoid. So, just an example, I'll take these two pieces with no magnets in them, and so when they're attached, um, it's a nice tight connection, but without, without those fingers, what'll happen is it'll want to either spin and come off, disconnect that way, or slide off in shearing force and disconnect that way. So, so these... This little system helps keep that from happening, and the only way it can come apart is just pulling straight out. And I use <clears throat> eight magnets. Some people use like six in a hexagonal design. I use eight because I just, you know, eight, eight, or eight magnets are stronger than six. Now I'll go ahead and link these files down in the description below, and they're free. They're on Thingiverse. And... Um, I will describe all of the ones that I have designed so far. So if you have the same type of equipment that I do, you'll be able to use them without any modification. Um, so I'm, again, I'm using standard um, four inch vent piping. I'm also using four inch uh, dust collection hose. And I've made a couple of adapters for two and a half inch shop vac hose. And I made a special adapter just for my DeWalt uh, discharge here on my DeWalt planer. Um, so let me show you what I have here. So this piece right here is the piece that is going to go up into the T that's in the ceiling. So the lower half of this purple fitting um, fits into the flange and I designed it so you can print the flanges separate from the adapters that way you print as many of these as you need and then you print the different adapters that you need and then you glue them together and that's how you get your that's how you get your system so this is the main adapter this one's the one that'll go into the ceiling this one is an adapter for this four inch for this four inch hose here. It's a screw on adapter. And it's actually a remix of a design that is already in Thingiverse. So I, I did not create this. This was already be created by somebody else and it's a genius design for attaching these types of spiral wound hoses here. <clears throat> 
This is a simple adapter for a two and a half inch shop back hose. So the shop back hose goes in there, obviously. And like I said before, this is an adapter for the DeWalt planer. And basically this just adapts it to a two and a half inch shop vac hose because a two and a half inch shop vac hose just barely might seat on the inside of here, but it's not a good fit and uh, it tends to pop off. The last thing I did is I made some adapters for PVC pipe <clears throat> for my uh, big old drum sander here. So this port on this drum sander is just under four inches. So I printed a shim that will pop on top of there. And then that allows this pipe to fit on there. And then on the top of the pipe, I will be able to fit this fitting and then that's going to be how I attach the hose. And the hose will just dangle from this piece of equipment. It'll always be there. It'll be a permanent attachment. So if you'll indulge me, I'll show you how I glue the magnets in and how I make sure I get the polarity of the magnets correct and how I glue the adapters into the flanges. And then once everything's said and done, I will show you these uh, these adapters, these mag lock. I don't want to call them mag lock because I'm sure that's uh, trademarked. So I don't know what I'll call them, but these magnetic interlocking flanges. I'll show you them in action at the end of this video. So these are the magnets that I use. They're uh, 10 millimeter by three millimeter magnets. Um, I got them off of Amazon. I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description below uh, that if you want to get your own. <clears throat> The first thing I do when I get these magnets is that I go through with a Sharpie and I mark one side. It doesn't matter if it's north or south. Um, you just mark the same side of every single magnet. Okay. So when you install the magnets, <clears throat> you make sure that the same side is pointing in one direction. And so now I know that for any adapters that I make that will interface with this one, the black dot has to be facing inside. See, like here's the black dot here. Has to be, fit. sorry, here's the black dot here. So it has to be facing away from this face, right? So there's no black dot here. And that's going to be the one that interacts with that magnet. As you can see on this flange, all the black dots are turned inward. And so that's why these two snap together so perfectly. So it's not rocket science. All you have to do is uh, super glue some magnets in and try to keep them away from each other as you're doing it. And um, you just got to remember which way the magnets go in the holes. Okay, to glue in the uh, magnets, I just use some medium CA glue. You don't need a whole lot. Just a big drop in the bottom of each of these holes. Like this. They will, it will squeeze out a little bit <clears throat> once you get it in there. Sometimes these holes can be a little tight, so you got to kind of help it get in there. So it's really cold out here. It's probably around freezing. And um, as you can see, first of all, everything has shrunk a little bit. So it was a little bit harder to get this in. Last time I did this, they just dropped right in. Second of all, the PLA is a little brittle, so you might get some cracking, but super glue will kind of help with that. I'm not too worried about it. Now, because I'm impatient, um, I'm, I'm going to hit this with a little bit of this uh, activator. This activator spray here, this AK fix, AC fix, whatever you want to call it, 
it does not stain PLA, but some of the other ones, like the Stickfast brand activator, will leave this white residue behind. So this is just strictly for those of you that are 3D printing things and using super glue. If you want an activator that does not leave these ugly stains behind on your PLA, buy this Acfix 705. It's really good stuff and it's clean. And it's pretty much ready to go now as far as uh, the magnets installation. So I'll test it. I'll test it with this guy here. It snaps right in. Good to go. Now I will add one of my adapters. And in order to do that, I'm going to use some of this clear Gorilla Glue. Um, the reason I do that is because there's just a few more gaps that can develop when you're doing an interface such as this. And super glue is not very good at filling gaps. Um, and the Gorilla Glue does just a little bit better job at filling those gaps. Um, so as you can see here, I used the Gorilla Glue and it did a pretty good job. So that's why I'm using Gorilla Glue. Even though it is a pretty decent fit, the Gorilla Glue will make sure the clear, it's the clear Gorilla Glue, kind of make sure that everything stays where it belongs. So this one is complete. Okay, this one wasn't as tight of a fit up as the other ones have been. And there could be lots of reasons for that. It could have been the printer that I used is not as dialed in as another printer. Or more likely it's because this one I think is an earlier revision of this flange that I designed in Fusion. And so these uh, ones were further refined. And so they, everything just fits better. So I'm going to go ahead and let these, this glue cure overnight because it's pretty cold out here. And then tomorrow I'll go ahead and get everything installed and you guys can check out and see how it, how it works. Okay, it's the next day and the glue has set up so I can take these clamps off now. There it is. It ain't pretty, but it'll work. So now what I need to do is I'm going to take this part here and I'm going to install it up into that ceiling port. Okay, so I finished installing the flange on the T there. And I went ahead and I installed everything on my drum sander. I know it looks kind of silly. This is all I had left over from all the other piping that I did. And so I just needed this two foot section of pipe to get it long enough to reach the ceiling. If I end up buying more of this four inch hose in the future, I'll probably replace that with hose, but right now it's actually not too bad. It just kind of hangs there and uh, it's good. Last thing I have to do is the fit with this two and a half inch uh, hose is just a little loose. So I'll put like one turn, one turn of the uh, aluminum tape on each end and that should tighten things up a little bit. It's not the end of the world. I, this will want to blow this hose off because the blower in this planer is very powerful. And so I just wanna make sure that this goes doesn't go anywhere. So I want that fit to be pretty tight. And right now it's just a little too loose. Okay, now I've added a couple of turns of that aluminum tape onto the end of my shop vac hose so that fit is nice and tight on here, like that. And the best part is, it still works with regular shop vac accessories, so it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't get in the way of you using your shop vac hose like a normal shop vac hose. So now with this attached, let's see if we can make this work. There we go. 
So, at the very least, it can handle the weight of the hose, um, but it's on there pretty good. So now the other end of the hose is gonna go into my planer. And we will try this out now with uh, some of that walnut that I'm drying over there. Next we'll try the, the old uh, drum sander over there. Now with this setup, I can hook up pretty much any tool that I want. Um, so you've already seen me demonstrate my planer and my drum sander, which generate some of the most dust out of any tool in my shop. I've also got a spindle sander that it'll hook up to just fine. Um, I have this 14 inch bandsaw and it's got a small um, hose attached to it and that hose actually has a two and a half inch adapter on it so it will accept that and speaking of these smaller hoses I don't know what the actual size is what is it is one and a quarter whatever the small size is it's got a two and a half inch adapter on it and now what I can do with one of these I can take this and hook it into the blade guard for my table saw and provide a small amount of dust collection on the top side of my saw along with the dust collection that is happening on the underside of my saw. And on top of all that I can just attach a long two and a half inch hose and use it to clean up my whole shop all over the place. So um, hopefully by doing this I have eliminated my bulky shop vac and the cyclone system that I have attached to my shop vac so uh, I can just free up some space in this shop because this is a small shop and every little bit of space that I can gain is a win for me. So for those of you that already have your 3D printers, I'm going to link the files down in the description below. And these are by no means perfect. They're, they're going to require a little tweaking. You can either tweak the files themselves or you can do like I did. You can just tweak the hoses and um, you know, add a little bit of tape as needed. Um, every hose is gonna be different, every fitting's going to be different, every printer is going to be different, even down to the type of filament that you use. So I don't know if I'd be able to dial it in perfect and make it perfect for everybody, but you should be able to take these files as a starting point and modify them for your needs. So this is going to wrap it up for my dust collector series. Um, this was the last piece of the puzzle as far as what I'm going to use currently. I left myself room for expansion on this T up here and I also um, at the end of the miter saw station I left another T in case I want to put dust collection on, on my drill press if I end up doing anything like that in the future, I'll be sure to document it and put it in the same playlist that this one is in. If you have any comments or suggestions or anything, go ahead and leave them down in the comments section below. I'll be happy to read your comments. And if you like this type of content, go ahead and uh, like the video and subscribe because I put out videos like this on a pretty regular basis. I want to thank you all for sticking around and watching 
me do this and sticking with this whole dust collector project. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. Thank you everybody for watching and I'll see you next time.